What up, tribe? What up, family? Hope y'all vibrate, man. What y'all want to do? I want to just dig on some double slits, kick back in the classroom, man, let these cats talk on some things. It's all about energy, frequency, vibration, man. 432, the drop radio. Coming back at you, man. I've been digging, man. I ain't been getting no sleep, man. I've been digging on it for you. I know it's about to get cold, too, man. So, oh boy, we got some. <laughs> We got some uh, nice and cozies coming, man, real soon. Love to Paco, man, you know what I'm saying? We got a lot of things behind the scenes happening, man. A lot of things happening, man. Love to Drop Nation. Love to all the family, man. Love to all the, all the, you know what I'm saying, all the real ones, man, that just showed us, man, a couple things. You know what I'm saying? Anybody that you learn a couple things from, man, love to y'all, man. Let's get it, man. We about to get in these double slits. Let's get in the classroom. We're going to kick back. I right? just want to give y'all some love, man. Keep dropping that drop. Check the site out, man. You know, it's not done yet, but, you know, just let me know how it's functioning, man. I want to know the functionality. Remember the password, man. Don't tell nobody. Don't tell nobody the password, man. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four is the password. We're going to keep it like that for like a month or so so y'all can vibrate. And then make sure you subscribe, register. I didn't really know y'all could even really log in and do all that stuff, so it's pretty dope, man. So y'all can log in, check out the chat room. Log into the chat room. Do all that stuff, man. Let's have some fun, man. While we learn, we can always have fun. Dig on the library. Keep dropping the drop. Let go, man. This is some experimentation for that ass, man. Double slit experiments. Let's go. Let's get it, man. I hop to the drop. Drop nation. Come out and play. Yeah, I'm feeling good. I hope you're feeling great. I'm feeling good, and I hope you're feeling great. You know, man, it's not easy, man, to make it another day, dodge the hijack. So you got to feel good about something. You know, don't focus on all the shit you don't got, all the shit you didn't do this week yet, all the shit, you know what I mean, that seemed impossible. Don't focus on all that stuff, man. You know what I'm saying? You know, peace and power, man, to all the, you know what I'm saying, all the uh, teenagers, man, and, and you know what I'm saying, early early 20s, you know what I mean? All y'all, man, are just really inspiration to me. I'm getting so much just great, great uh, energy, man, just from the youth, you know what I mean? And I can tell that you are the validation and the manifestation, man, of, of everything that, that we're digging on, man, everything that's unfolding, really recovering ourselves in the so-called old world. And peace to the fan that dropped it on me, he said, man, they only call it new world to refer to their new world order. They don't really think this is the new world. It's just labeled that in reference to the new world order. I said, God damn, this shit's getting deeper. But man, we dug on a little bit of this before. I'm going to get this as an intro. We're going to get into, man, some uh, cold, uh, a cold breakdown. Richard Feenan, Feenman, Fenman on electron two slit experiments so this is what we're gonna get to this is the main event here you can tell this is one of them uh og joints that got a lot of babies in it you know what i mean so let's just get this as a reference man peace and power i hop to the tribe man keep it going man keep it flowing tribe of vibe up. this experiment, we first need to see how particles, or little balls of matter, act. If we randomly shoot a small object, say a marble, at the screen, we see a pattern on the back wall where they went through the slit and hit. Now, if we add a second slit, we would expect to see a second band duplicated to the right. Now, let's look at waves. The waves hit the slit and radiate out, striking the back wall with the most intensity directly in line with the slit. The line of brightness on the back screen shows that intensity. This is similar to the line the marbles make. But when we add the second slit, something different happens. If the top of one wave meets the bottom of another wave, they 
cancel each other out. So now there is an interference pattern on the back wall. Places where the two tops meet are the highest intensity, the bright lines, and where they cancel, there is nothing. So when we throw things, that is matter, through two slits, we get this, two bands of hits. <laughs> and with now, we're going to surf the wave, but, you know, get that drop that we just dropped with the Bell Labs and the whole thing where they said, Oh, no, boss, it's coming from everywhere. <laughs> man, you know, that's what they said, man, when they, uh, you know, dug on your, what they call interference, they call you static. The hijacks call you static, all right? The hijacks call you pagans, all kinds of shit. You call them heathen, they call you pagan, they call you static. They call the creator's frequency interference. So this interference pattern, because of these two slits, these two possibilities, right? If it was just a particle, it would just pass through those. But the wave, the wave, the wave we're surfing, the wave is hitting every possibility. The framer and the shaper. Your father is the vibration you're in. That's the seed. The seed from father to son is the kingdom, is the vibration. Has never been lost, continues to spread. You know, it's always crazy when folks, you know, be like, uh, oh, man, we're all mixed up now, man. So it don't really matter about your seed or your tribe. Everybody's mixed. We're all amalgamated. Everybody's mixed. Think of it this way. Let's just follow the path of a seed. The seed of Adam, the seed of original man, let's just call that, all right, so we're hijack free, we're completely hijack free, let's just say original man, created, just like your sacred trees, just like the crystals, right, now this is the seed, this is the seed of this original signature, you are the image, the image the sequence, the sequence, the energy, the signature. This seed is passed on. Original man through his son, through his son, through his son. Now the creator in whose image this seed is, the sequence is, is this seed. It's the same. It's the image. It's the sequence. The sequence of the seed is the sequence of the creator. All right. We stay in hijack free. I'm not mentioning nothing. I'm just saying, follow me now. We just talk of original man created by the creator. Can we all rock with that? The framer and the shaper. Your mother and your father. She who bears children. She takes all the ingredients. And in your father's vibration, you are molded. Now you're following the seed. Now you say, we're all mixed up. But did the seed get mixed up? I mean, sure, you know what I'm saying? This seed was spread through a lot of other nations. We know Solomon had many wives, and we know this seed was, this seed was spread all over the place. But it also hit the target as well. It was also spread right into its nation. It was also spread in either way. We're just talking seed. If you plant the seed of an apple tree in Whatever soil, even with the imprint it has, the other nations, the other imprint of different soils, it's still an apple tree. It's still an apple. Might be a little different, but it's an apple. And that's still the seed. And that apple is going to have a seed, but that seed only came from one place, and that's the original man. Created by the creator. So, if a bunch of white people mixed in, or... Or, or 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 raped and mutilated all our all these women, you know what I'm saying, all of our mothers that, you know what I'm saying, had to had to get mutilated for this heathen to feel like they have land here. All our mothers that suffered. That seed that was put in them in those situations was hijack seed. So they got a hijack seed put in them. And in many of those cases, when you read about it, all that torment on their body, they weren't even having babies like that. You don't just produce babies and all that torment. So if you take all that theory, you know, I'm throwing all that theory around. All these white people came over here and just raped all our women and mixed all our seed out. Our seed doesn't matter anymore, right? 
But what happened to that same seed of original man? How did the hijack mix out that seed? Did not the same spectrum, the same wave, the same image from the beginning that was passed from father to son, even through different soil, the same apple that kept sprouting, dropping its seed back into the soil. This is 432. That same sequence is sprouting up today from original man. Because all that rape of our mothers still did not affect the seed. It affected our mothers and it affected our families. But it didn't affect the seed that was still passed from father to son. They didn't intercept that shit. That man still had children and we still had children and we still had children. So that seed still survives that seed is still a remnant yes we got a bunch of mixed up and amalgamated situations but you can't knock the hustle <laughs> of that seed that seed still survives because even in all that chaos we're still having babies and those babies from father to son are still being passed on and they can't stop it so the seed it's hitting every possibility. It is a wave. And now it's a wave that we're swimming in and surfing in. We're talking a framer and shaper in double slit experiments. So you have this so-called particle of light. Wave or particle. Wave or particle passing through both slits. You expect it just to hit one. Instead it forms an entire wave. Out of two possibilities. Interacting, interwoven like ingredients, like the framer, your mother connects all the dots. All the dots are connected in harmony. But this wave is still in the frequency of that which has shaped it, the vibration itself, the framer and shaper. You don't get the connectivity without the wave, without the energy without the shape itself so just like these double slits are hitting and you see all this spectrum so this light is coming from and through our framer and shaper and in us is hitting every possibility we are every example we are every reflection we are every possibility of our framer and shaper in the original seed of original man that is hijacked free today because it never got intercepted they never stop you from falling in love and having babies, right? So that son kept passing the seed from original man and it's right here among you today, walking among you today, the so-called Negro. They don't have a title. They don't have a name for you. So when you look at this double slit and you understand this is tribal, then you're saying this is the possibilities. This is the frequency. This is the original frequency. And everything is connected to, has everything to do with the so-called Negro today waking up as original man, as original seed, energy, frequency. We're talking Adam. We're talking framer and shaper. Energy, frequency, vibration. So with that, you have to have that perspective to see the full spectrum of light. Let's get it again. The granddaddy of all quantum weirdness, the infamous double slit experiment. To understand this experiment, we first need to see how particles or little balls of matter act. If we randomly shoot a small object, say a marble, at the screen, we see a pattern on the back wall where they went through the slit and hit. Now, if we add a second slit, we would expect to see a second band duplicated to the right. Now, let's look at waves. The waves hit the slit and radiate out, striking the back wall with the most intensity directly in line with the slit. The line of brightness on the back screen shows that intensity. This is similar to the line the marbles make. But when we add the second slit, something different happens. If the top of one wave meets the bottom of another wave, they cancel each other out. So now 
there is an interference pattern on the back wall. Places where the two tops meet are the highest intensity, the bright lines, and where they cancel, there is nothing. So, when we throw things, that is, matter, through two slits, we get this, two bands of hits. And with waves, we get an interference pattern of many bands. Good so far. Now, let's go quantum. <laughs> An electron is a tiny, tiny bit of matter, like a tiny marble. Let's fire a stream through one slit. It behaves just like the marble, a single band. So, if we shoot these tiny bits through two slits, we should get, like the marbles, two bands. What? An interference pattern! We fired electrons, tiny bits of matter, through. But we get a pattern like waves, not like little marbles. How? How could pieces of matter create an interference pattern like a wave? It doesn't make sense. But physicists are clever. They thought maybe those little balls are bouncing off each other and creating that pattern. So, they decide to shoot electrons through one at a time. There is no way they could interfere with each other. But after an hour of this, the same interference pattern is seen to emerge. The conclusion is inescapable. The single electron leaves as a particle, becomes a wave of potentials, goes through both slits, and interferes with itself to hit the wall like a particle. But mathematically, it's even stranger. It goes through both slits, and it goes through neither. And it goes through just one, and it goes through just the other. All of these possibilities are in superposition with each other. But wow, all these possibilities. So it starts as this single ball. So that's the union, you know what I mean? I'm just surfing the wave, man. You know what I mean? We're talking about the, the unity, the, the energy of the oneness of your framer and shaper now you have the two possibilities the two slits now it becomes the framer and shaper which becomes all these possibilities all of these possibilities boom so now you're still in the original frequency but now you have all these possibilities and how do you connect it in your life? How do you connect all the possibilities? You have to go back to the one. You have to go back to the oneness. The framer and shaper is not a duality. It's a oneness. Thought came with this duality and this and this and that. We're talking oneness. We're talking an energy that's connected. But it's a comprehension of that oneness. Of what was split apart. And you were denied all your possibilities. But when you're in the connection, every possibility is yours. You own every single dot on the board. Then you get some, um, <laughs> you get some, uh, you know, pretty dope, uh, dope results. Then you got the X-Men. Right? <laughs> then you got all that energy. Once you get in that full frequency of all the possibilities, you know what I'm saying, which is just the oneness. And that's what our tune-up is about. That's what our charge-up is about. That's what our Shabbat is about, the frequency of the oneness. To return to the frequency of the one great Hawa. In order to get all your possibilities. But you used to have all these possibilities just, you know what I'm saying, at your disposal. And what did you do with it? Did you use it or did you abuse it? Did you abuse all the possibilities and all the nations looked at you and they said, look at all these possibilities these people got. I can't wait till they have no more possibilities. I'm going to kick their ass. Just because they had so much possibility. So much power. This is real talk, real spill, man. And when we get back to the oneness, we'll never be, you know what I'm saying, distracted by the 
all the possibilities again we'll just have the gratitude of the oneness in the oneness connected as one out of the illusion of seclusion these are in superposition with each other but physicists were completely baffled by this so they decided to peek and see which slit actually goes through now watch this they put a measuring device by one slit to see which one it went through and let it fly <laughs> But the quantum world is far more mysterious than they could have imagined. When they observed, the electron went back to behaving like a little marble. It produced a pattern of two bands, not an interference pattern of many. Mm. The very act of measuring or observing which slit it went through meant it only went through one, not both. The electron decided to act differently, as though it was aware it was being watched. Dodge the hijack, all seeing eye. <laughs> and what do you get? You get observation, you get the witness, you get a witness. You, you know, read about having a witness, you are the witnesses. Everything breaks down into energy frequency and vibration everything that you've ever read connects back to the energy that you're going to choose choose to swim in now if particles or shit waves or conscious you know i mean when these things are acting different when they're being observed as if they're aware that they're being observed and then they're just choosing a possibility. So that's the possibility that you're observing right now. That's a possibility. But when you're not observing it, there's endless possibility. <laughs> so subconsciously, there's endless possibilities. Consciously, you choose one possibility. Now you have to comprehend, my people, you are the witnesses. So what are you going to witness? If by witnessing, there's a possibility, there's a result, because it's being witnessed, then what does it mean for the collective mind and the collective consciousness and the collective witnesses? How does that affect the reality that you're stepping into? Can you witness your own reality that you're actually consciously witnessing? Can you consciously decide to witness and in turn, create your reality. Will you release your own Mashiach? Will you release your own salvation? Will you free yourselves if you witness yourselves? And it was here that physicists stepped forever into the strange, never world of quantum events. What is matter? Marbles or waves? And waves of what? And what does an observer have to do with any of this? The observer collapsed the wave function simply by observing. The observer collapsed the wave function. Marbles or waves? And waves of what? And what does an observer have to do with any of this? The observer collapsed the wave function simply by observing so when we observe collectively then we collapse the wave function into a reality that we consciously agree to step in that door just like the paleo picked up the aleph the power the energy right it starts with the oneness the one aleph l the bet goes into the house the temple now this energy is going into this temple what happens next the gong gamma gimel gong now we have a action now we have a foot now we have a walking now we have a connection so now that we can walk 
with this power that's gone into this house, the Aleph, the Bet. Now we can make a movement through what? A door. When you follow this picto, it tells a story. The Aleph, the one, goes into the house. Gemo, a gemos. Gam. Into a what? We're walking, we're having action into a door, into a frequency, into a reality. You're witnessing it. I'm witnessing it. So we're collapsing the wave function into a single reality, although there are endless possibilities. And we're acting out really every single one of them. On different collapsed, you know, observations. But maybe we're only aware of one at a time. Or maybe, you know, it's all happening at the same time. Because when that light, you know, you know, we'll see more with the sun. It's forming the full pattern. So the full pattern ain't doing it one at a time. The full pattern is bad. So are we experiencing every possibility simultaneously but in a subconscious way? What's the connectivity? What's this time-space thing? And what's this door that we're walking into as Drop Nation? What's our reality that we're observing as witnesses? As witnesses, all right? So, you know, I'll drop this link on you, man. This is from the uh, popularmechanics.com. The logic defying double slit experiment is even weirder than you thought. So if you thought that was weird, you know I'm saying if you thought that was strange, the logic to find double slit experiment is even weirder than you thought. So, you know, let's get a little bit of it. Do you remember the double slit experiment? It's one of the weirder exp experiments in modern physics and cuts to the heart of the weirdness of quantum mechanics. Basically, waves that pass through two narrow parallel slits will form an interference pattern. All right. <laughs> on a screen, this is true for all waves, whether they, they're light waves, water waves, or sound waves. But light isn't just a wave. It's also a particle called a photon, called a photon. They just call these things things. We're just talking energy, frequency, vibration. Don't let it mess you up. So what happens if you shoot a single photon at the double slit? Turns out, even though there's only one photon it still forms an interference pattern it's as if the photon traveled through both slits simultaneously you can read more about the double slit experiment here but wait it gets even weirder as a new episode of pbs the space time show just by observing the double slit experiment the behavior of the photon changes the idea behind a double slit experiment is even that even if the photons are sent through the slits at one at a time there's still a wave present to produce the interference pattern the wave is a wave of probability so we're surfing the wave we surf the wave of probability we say we're asking the right questions we don't have to have the right answers i don't gotta debate nobody about shit not at all i'm just asking questions and we've been surfing the wave doing that hijack free it's as simple as that tribing up building up you know what i'm saying trying to you know be uh you know what i'm saying have those, you know, good, uh, what you call it, you know, I'm sorry, you know what I'm saying, just, just have that good influence, you know, we're just trying to, you know, feel that good influence, influence each other, man, crystallize each other, and that's it, you know what I mean, so, this wave is a wave of probability, when you start cutting it off, and it's only this, and only that, and only this, nah, man, we say, you have the drop, that's what it is, it's the, it's the information, it's the sequence, it's the it's the energy. The drop is the energy, it's the purified substance. Because of what you've gone through, you've been purified. There's a drop that comes out of it. It's not for no reason. So what's the probability? What's the possibility? What's coming out of this pattern? What's the wave? What's so different now? What's Daniel 12 all about? What's being unsealed? Is it just a book? Is it just a book? Or is it the wave? Is it, is it the energy? We're talking about your words, right? That sound, that's frequency. So the frequency is being unsealed. We're going to drop on that crystal skulls, man. Because, you know, I want to dig on. Did this happen? Did this not happen? You know what I'm saying? What's really going on with these crystal skulls? And, and, and all that happened, you know, with the with the collective, uh, you know, with the freeing of all the, uh, you know, the consciousness back to the people that the Mayans were talking about. So 
All this, you know, seems to have a connection. The crystal, the frequency, the energy, the freeing of the wave, the creator telling you that I'm going to put a spirit of stupor on you. What happens when that stupor gets put on you for being so stubborn and arrogant and boasting and putting false energies above your original power? You're put to sleep. <laughs> All you got is an interference pattern at this point. But now, you know, like any other spell, you come back. Every spell is temporary when it's a spell. The most I didn't put you on a permanent stupor. So now the probability is in your favor. Ah, you mean the house always wins? Yes, you are the house. You are the frequency. They're just renting. They're in celestial apartments. They're just renting here. This is your house. Moors from Mars want to take over Earth? No, this is your house. This is your Earth. <laughs> this is your frequency. You can't hijack this. Atlantis can't have it. We are original man. We are original woman. We are original oneness. We are the wave of probability. The wave is a wave of probability because the experiment is set up so that the scientists don't know which of the two slits any individual full time will pass through. But if they try to find out by setting up detectors in front of each slit to determine which slit the full time really goes through, the interference pattern doesn't show up at all. This is true even if they try setting up the device behind the slits, no matter what the scientists do, even if they try anything to observe the photons, the interference pattern fails to emerge because it's, no, it's, it's being watched by watching it. It's changing the entire wave. You are the witnesses. By watching it, it changes the entire wave into a single probability, a, a single event. When you're not watching, the entire board is open. So in reality, the entire board is open for you. It gets even weirder than that. <laughs> A group of scientists tried a variation on the, of the double slit experiment called the delayed choice experiment. The scientists placed a special crystal at each slit. I just told you about the Mayan crystal skulls and y'all think this is play play. Now they're going to bring up crystals. Now they're going to bring up crystals. Come on, man. We're surfing the wave. The scientist placed a special crystal at each slit. The crystal splits any incoming photons into a pair of identical photons. One photon from this pair should go on to create the standard interference pattern while the other travels to a detector. Perhaps with this setup, physicists might successfully find a way to observe the logic defined behavior of photons but it still doesn't work and here's the really weird part it doesn't work regardless of when that detection happens even if the second photon is detected after the first photon hits the screen it still ruins the interference pattern this means that observing a photon can change events that have already happened Oh, shit, is what you should be saying. You know what I mean? Didn't, who dropped that, jo Josephus or somebody, man, that that prophecy, you know what I'm saying? Um, you know what I'm saying? Like, you know, fulfilling it, uh, switches the future to the past, and the past to the future, something like that. You know, you know what I'm talking about. Switches the future to the past and the past to the future. So it's not just observing it at that time, but it says that the really weird part <laughs> is that it doesn't work regardless of when the detection happens. Even if the second photon is detected after the first photon hits the screen, it still ruins the interference pattern. It still affects the wave. So you can affect the wave like a ripple by observing it now. It doesn't matter that it happened in the past. It doesn't matter that it happened in the past. There is no time. This proves there is no time. That means what's happening in the past is happening right now. It's the same interference pattern. It's the same wave. This means that observing a photon can change events that have already happened. Wow. 
So with your collective consciousness and waking up to who you are today and observing you, observing your creator within your sequence that's embedded in your sequence. But wait, you mean by walking in the law today, it will affect what has already happened? You mean by not killing, not stealing, and honoring your, your uh, you know what I'm saying, mother and father above, not covenant your your neighbors, your your brothers, you know, wife and things and, and, and dropping all that envy, dropping all that covet, false witness and, and all that sickness, not rocking with the connection of your creator every seven days, a cutoff day, like Paleo Hebrew is a Zion, a weapon. For, for 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 food for nourishment you ain't getting food you ain't eating you ain't getting the nourishment of the frequency so you're not able to tune in to observe to witness you are the witnesses by witnessing today by witnessing your law your vibration today vibration is law energy frequency vibration is law you're in a law you're in a vibration you have a covenant with vibration by observing a photon can change events that have already happened. They're waiting on us to change the events that have already happened by observing, by witnessing, observing your vibration, your covenant. Scientists are still unsure how exactly this thing, whole thing works. Of course, scientists never know. They're always unsure. They say you're spinning on a ball, but they're unsure because they can't even prove gravity, which is why it's a theory, not a law. Gravity is a theory because they're unsure, but they teach it to you like it's sure, like it's fact, but they're unsure, which makes it a theory, not a law. It's one of the greatest mysteries of quantum mechanics. Don't they say the same thing about the American Negro? Don't they say the same thing about the American? It's a mystery. These people, we don't know where it came from. We don't know the migration patterns. We don't know, boss. It's a mystery, just like your frequency. Put it together, and it's talking about you. They're blasting you open. You're walking in yourself, and you're putting yourself back apart, back together. Humpty Dumpty done fell off the wall. Humpty Dumpty done fell off the wall. Negro. Quantum man. Real one. Perhaps someday, someone will finally be able to solve it. Well, let go, man. Let go. Let go, man. <laughs> All right, man. You know, I get a little, a little excited when I feel that, when I feel that frequency, man. So, uh, you know, this is going to kind of go over that again a little bit differently. I want to get a good comprehension of this before we get into uh, the main event here, man. This Richard Feynman. Feynman. All right, man, man. Let's get a little bit of this. Quantum mechanics existed because of this experiment. It's a very famous experiment, and uh, it's called the double slit experiment. For many years, uh, scientists knew that if you put light through two slits in a barrier, that you would get this diffraction pattern. What would happen is some of the light would go through this slit, some of the light would go through this slit, and then the light would interfere with each other. The way it interfered is that the distance between here and that point and the distance between here and that point from the two slits had to be some integral number of wavelengths so that the wavelengths got there in phase. And when they did, you'd get some light. And when they didn't, when they got out of phase, you got nothing. You got dark spots in between them. Okay, so this was an experiment well known, done many times, diffraction grading. And then Einstein came along and studied the um, thermal um, light hitting uh, things and knocking out electrons, okay? Yeah, photoelectric effect. He, uh, he was studying that, and he realized that light looked like a particle. It seemed to always have some integer number of chunks of momentum. It came with little chunks of momentum, just like particles. So he said, light's a particle, and his theory supported that. Well, now that made a, a big question. Well, if light's a particle, particles we know. You know, they go through, through slits. They just travel in straight lines unless interacted on by an exterior force, right? Newton told us that. And they would put a little spot of light behind that slit and a little spot of light back behind that spot. That's what a particle would do. So if light's particles, you know, how do we get this? So they decided, let's test this out. They were very clever, found a way to fire one photon at a time at these slits. So they fired a photon. Of course, one photon isn't enough to measure. 
specifically in those days. So they actually fired thousands, but they only fired them one at a time. So only one photon at a time interacted with these slits. And what do you think they got? Did they get this or this? Well, they got this. They got a diffraction pattern. Now, how is that? You were sending particles in these slits, and you got this diffraction pattern. Well, they didn't understand that very well. So uh, they said, well, let's look and see what's going on at those slits. So these little red things are symbolizing detectors. So they put photon detectors there and said, let's see what's happening at the slit. And when they did, sure enough, they occasionally, when a photon got fired, they'd find that it would go through this slit. And when it did, they'd get a little uh, thing from their detector. And uh, when it did, it'd go straight through, just like Newton said, and stop right at the back behind the slit. And when one went through this slit, it would stop right there, and they got this pattern. So then it was thinking, well, it's the detectors are making the difference. When we detect it, we get this, and we don't detect it, we get this. So whether it was by, uh, by just luck or whether it's because they were clever, I don't know. But uh, fortunately, one of them decided to leave the detectors on because if they turned off the detectors entirely, of course, they got this. And the idea was, well, the detectors are interfering. So somebody decided to leave the detectors on but just not take any data. In other words, the detectors were there detecting but they just weren't collecting any data. So if it was, let's say, going to a magnetic tape, then there was no magnetic tape loaded. Okay, the head of the tape was still showing what the detector said. The head of the tape was still oscillating because the detectors were working. <clears throat> the detectors were still detecting. Well, what do you think happened? They got this. So they got the diffraction pattern. Okay, so what it turned out was that if they looked, if they collected the data... Okay, then they get this. If they didn't collect the data and they weren't looking, they got this. That let them know that it was the actual... That's almost as if just saying when they surf the wave, they get every possibility. When they're just there just taking data, you know, trying to hijack it, trying to, oh, let me see what this, you know, it's a different frequency, you know what I mean? So you can detect it either way to allow it to detect it, but the collecting of the data was the intrusive part which only gave it that one single possibility that, that that one look all this synthetic energy that is 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 you know you know thinking that they got a kingdom today you know it's a synthetic energy and they can only see this one possibility they can't surf the wave and get all the probabilities which is why they fear you which is why they have destroyed to the furthest capacity of any destruction of any people, this so-called Negro right here in America, beyond any capacity, beyond any number, to the furthest extent, to this day, to hijack the frequency, to, you know, say, oh, let's boost and have our own uh, a signal beyond the 7.23 to the 7.35 let's get out of 432 and get disharmonic let's disconnect it let's close every light every avenue where light might enter the so-called slave's mind that's what the virginia house of delegates henry brown said we have to, to the best of our ability done everything we can to close every avenue by which light might enter the negro's mind if we can extinguish their capacity to even see the light or catch the wave or surf the wave, if we can extinguish even their capacity to surf the wave, our work will, will be done and we would be safe and they will be reduced to the beast. Oh, the beast with just one possibility, not the wave. If we can extinguish their capacity to see the light so they weren't sure they can do it, they knew they probably couldn't do it, but he's just, uh, you know, you know, just, just, just having a fantasy moment, man. If we could extinguish their capacity to surf the wave, we will be safe. It's all about their safety. They are afraid of you because of your probabilities. Well, conscious act of taking the data that made the difference as to whether light was a wave or light was a particle. Well, that's was a really big deal okay suddenly you know life wasn't clear anymore it had been real clear up to that time and it wasn't clear okay, the, uh, here's how that works a bright young guy named Erwin Schrodinger German um, 
he was a graduate student. And if you'll notice in physics, most of the big breakthroughs occur with young people because they haven't uh, been in the system long enough to understand what's impossible. <laughs> so they, uh, they're still open-minded. They can still think out of the box because they're, they're not, uh, they haven't gotten educated enough not to be able to do that. So what he said is, well, look, these things come through here one at a time. Um, the photon obviously can't break up into pieces. You know, a photon's a photon. So it must be going through here, and some of the time it goes up here, which was a, a smaller spot. Some of the time it goes, each one of those photons must somehow pick a place to go, but it always picks one of these spots and never picks the spaces in between. So, so what he would do is, he said, well, let's say that this photon's really not a photon at all. It's just probability distribution. Now, by that, I don't mean that the photon is somewhere, and we just don't know where, and that's the probability of where it is. I mean that the photon doesn't exist as a particle. It's a probability distribution. Hmm. So given that it's a probability distribution, some of the probability goes through that hole, some of the probability yeah. goes through that hole. In other words, the probability is that some of it could go here. There's a certain amount of probability that goes here. The probability then interferes with itself like a wave, hmm. and you get this pattern. Bang. Body bag. Body bag, man, to the book of Daniel, man. I mean, you know, not for the book of Daniel, but, you know, body bag, you know, kings to the book of Daniel. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm talking about. You know drop talk. If y'all can't speak drop by now, y'all ain't got to drop. Nah, man. So what's he saying, man? That it's the possibility. It's all the possibility. It's not a single thing. It's not a single thing. You look and you see, oh, that's a desk. That's a computer. That's a copy machine. It's a single thing. There is no such thing as a single thing. Only what you have collapsed the wave to observe it to be. And a lot of that is based on the programming. And when they program your observation, they're programming your reality. And when you step out of their program and you go back to your trees, you're stepping into possibilities, probabilities. You're surfing the wave. Well, when he did that with the math, of course, it worked. And he got the pattern. And the physicists of the day looked at it and shook their heads, the graduate students. You know, I mean, okay, you got the answer, but it doesn't make any sense. Hmm. Well, then they took his, his methodology and they applied it to other things of the day. And guess what? It got the right answers there, too. And it kept getting right answers. So physicists had to take it seriously, even though it didn't make any sense. Quantum mechanics now is one of the most successful branches of physics ever. And it still doesn't make any sense, you see? <laughs> to physicists, they still don't understand it, but you're going to understand it by the end of this day. You know, you will understand it, and you'll have that much up on, on physicists. So uh, that's it. These particles are just probability distributions. Now, here's the way it was... Uh, uh, here's the way that uh, was described. At this point, do we have another one of the slides? Okay. At this point, um, they realized that it's because they took the measurement, right? Consciousness is involved. Hmm. They said that the probability wave function collapses to a physical particle when the measurement is made. Okay? The measurement collapses the wave form to a physical particle. So because they made the measurement here, they got a physical particle there. And when you have a physical particle, just like Newton says, it travels in a straight line. So it hits something. Here, the measurement was made here. So they didn't have a physical particle until the measurement was made. And when the measurement wave was made here, you got this diffraction pattern. Because up until this point, there was no particle. It was just probability. Wow. You see? So that was the, that was the answer. That's still the answer. Right? That's yeah. still the answer. There still is no particle, only probability, and you are the witness of it. You are the witness of it, man. Think on that, man. I think we're ready, man. Let's go. Let's get in this classroom and uh, see if we can dig on some of this uh, OG drop. Sometimes you got to dig in the old crates, man. Let's go. Probability and uncertainty, so-called Negro. <laughs> What's the probability of you, wakey, wakey, wakey? What's the probability of you waking up? Many. Minis and minis and minis and minis. 
Their uncertainty is not your uncertainty. Let's go. And yes, this is their view of nature or view of the creator. So this is their probability and uncertainty. The quantum mechanical view of what they're viewing your creator as nature. All right. So they're just trying to figure you out. They've always tried to figure you out. In the beginning of the history of experimental observation or any other kind of observation on scientific things, it's intuition, which is really based on just experience with everyday objects that suggest reasonable explanations for things. But as we try to widen and make more consistent our description of what we see, as it gets wider and wider and we see a greater range of phenomena, the explanations become what we call laws instead of simple explanations. But the one important odd characteristic is that they often seem to become more and more unreasonable, and more and more intuitively far from obvious. To take an example is the relativity theory in which, uh, for instance, the proposition is that if, two, if you think that two things occur at the same time, that's just a subjective opinion. Someone else could conclude that those two events, those two events, one was before the other, and that simultaneity is merely a subjective impression. Now, there's no reason why this should be otherwise, really. The things of the direct everyday experience involve large numbers of particles or involve things moving very slowly or involve other conditions that are very special and represent, in fact, a very limited experience with nature. It's only through, it's a small section only that one gets of natural phenomena from a direct experience. It's only through the refined measurements and careful experimentation that we can get a wider vision. And then we see unexpected things. We see things that are far from what we would get. We see things that are very far from what we would, could have imagined. And so our imagination is stretched to the utmost, not as in fiction to imagine things which aren't really there, but our imagination is stretched to the utmost just to comprehend those things which are there. Just to comprehend those things that are there. Can you dig it? Can you dig it? Your mind is stretched not to comprehend that which is not there, but to comprehend that which is there, man. Because you're not getting the full spectrum of light, which means you're not catching the full wave, which means you're not getting all the possibilities. So when you finally see your light is stretched just to comprehend the things that are really there in your reality. You have to get with it or get left on, man. Eh? Two events, those two events, one was before the other. And that simultaneity is merely a subjective impression. Now, there's no reason why this should be otherwise, really. The things of the direct everyday experience involve large numbers of particles or involve things moving very slowly or involve other conditions that are very special and represent, in fact, a very limited experience with nature. It's only through, it's a small section only that one gets of natural phenomena from a direct experience. It's only through the refined measurements and careful experimentation that we can get a wider vision. And then we see unexpected things. We see things that are far from what we would get. We see things that are very far from what we would could have imagined. And so our imagination is stretched to the utmost, not as in fiction to imagine things which aren't really there, but our imagination is stretched to the utmost just to comprehend those things which are there. Thank you. And it's this kind of a situation that I want to talk about tonight. Start, for instance, with the history of light. At first, light was seen to behave, it would appear to behave very much like a rain of particles, of corpuscles, like rain, bullets from a gun, same idea. 
Then with further research, it was clear that it was, was not right, but the light actually behaved like waves, like water waves, for instance. And then in the 20th century, on further research, it appeared that light actually behaved in many ways again, like particles. In the photoelectric effect, you could count these particles, they're called photons now, and so forth. Again, electrons, when they were first discovered, behaved exactly like 